first thing I want to do is make a change to our long platform. You'll remember that this is made up of two different platforms. The first one starts at negative 15 in the X. We actually want to change that in the prefab itself. So go to the assets folder, prefabs, drop down into the long platform and select the first platform. Change the X to zero. The second platform needs to be changed to 47.5. This will line the two up. You'll see that the change is made in our object that we dragged into the level as well. Our robot needs to be moved. We'll put him in the center at 50. The camera that follows him also should start out where he starts out. So 50 in the X there as well. You'll see everything looks good. The rest of this video we're going to be creating a script for our long platform. We got to make sure we put it on the prefab itself. So click down here, add component, scroll down to new script, CS resource spawner, create. Double click to open up in mono. Make sure mono opened up the new script. Double click here if you have to. Let's start by creating some public variables so we can tell this script exactly what we want spawned. The first will be public transform mineral, public transform gas for the second one. Then we need to tell the script how many we want to spawn of each. So public int mineral spawn count equals one to start. We'll do the same for gas. We'll want to create a list to actually store all of these spawn minerals. So let's import a new class here. System.collections.generic. We're going to make this list private. And it's going to hold transforms. And we're going to name it resource list. And you have to instantiate it like this. That's all the class variables we'll need. Let's move on to the rest of the script now. Let's get a reference to the platform that the script is attached to. This will be a transform. We'll name it platform equals this dot transform. Now we want to set the range that these resources can spawn in. So the minimum will be the start of our platform. Platform dot position dot x, which is normally a float, so we have to cast to an int. Maximum will be the starting position plus about 93. int x will store the position of the resource that we're about to spawn. Transform spawned resource. This is the resource we just spawned. We're going to use a for loop to spawn as many instances of minerals that we need. i will be initialized to 0. As long as i is less than the mineral spawn count that we set, we'll tick up i each time we go through this loop. We'll set the starting position each time we loop through. So x will equal a random number using random.range minimum and maximum positions using that min and max variable we created earlier. Now that we know the starting position, we can create a mineral instance. We're going to use the spawned resource variable to store it. We need to cast it to a transform. And this is done using the instantiate method. We'll have to tell it that we're spawning a mineral. We need to tell it where using new vector 3 and setting the x position that we just created here. And for y, we want to use the negative 4.5f that we've been using. The z will be 0. And we also need to set the rotation like this.
This will create a new mineral instance along our long platform. It will loop through as many times as the mineral spawn count. We'll need to add this to our resource list using resource list.add spawned resource. This list will store every resource that gets spawned for this platform. We'll want to spawn gas the same way we spawn minerals. So let's copy this, paste it down below, and change mineral spawn count to gas spawn count, just in case they're different. And we'll tell it to instantiate gas instead of minerals. Let's try out what we have so far. Go ahead and save this, minimize mono, click on long platform in our level. Because we added the script to our prefab, all long platforms will have it. We need to add the prefabs for mineral and gas, which we still need to create. Open up your prefabs folder, drag in the gas trigger and the mineral trigger then remove them from your level. Click the long platform again. Now we can drag the prefab straight from the prefab folder. So the mineral trigger goes here and the gas trigger goes here. This script should create one gas and one mineral instance. When we play it, that's what we see with one on each end of the platform in their random positions. Let's try this with 10 instances of each. Now when we play, we'll see a lot more gas and a lot more minerals. There they are. We'll also see an issue. Some of these overlap because the X positions are right next to each other. There's even three on top of each other here. In order to fix this, we're going to have to make a change to our script, which will be the last thing we do for this video. Find and open up the resource spawner script again. Scroll to the bottom. We're going to add some new code under our old code. Make sure you're still within the start method. We'll create an int array named removed resources and we'll set the size to as many resources as there are in our resource list currently. Initially we don't want to remove any resources until we find an overlap. So let's loop through our int array as long as i is less than resource list dot count which is how many ints are in this array. Each time we loop through, we want to take element i and set it to 0. That's how we're going to initialize this into array. In order to find an overlap, we'll need to check the x position of every resource against the x position of every other resource. So for this, we'll need a nested loop. The first one is going to loop as long as i is less than resource list dot count. And similarly for the second one, we'll use int j as long as j is less than resource list dot count. This is so we can compare every resource against every other resource. Now we'll do the logic to check for the overlap. We'll have to use the mathf library for its absolute value method. We'll want to get the x position of the first element in this first loop, so resource list i dot position dot x. With this x position of an element in this first resource list, we got the absolute value, so we don't have to worry about negative signs. We want to do a comparison greater than or equal to another element's x position in the second resource list. So mathf.absolute resource list j element. 
So again, this is for the second loop. We're using J dot position dot X. And we want to subtract one here. And I'll explain that in a bit. You'll see. So this is our first comparison. We'll need our second check to be true as well. So we'll use and and. Copy this first one. Paste it on this side. Scroll on over. The only real difference is that we'll use less than. And for the J elements position, we're going to use plus one instead of minus one. What this if check is doing is checking one unit to the left or right of the second resource and comparing that to the X position of our first resource. That will show us any overlaps. One thing we do need to add though is if I is not equal to J. That's because I and J could be the same resource and we don't want that. So we'll ignore that case. If they're not the same resource but they're overlapping, we're going to destroy one of them. So use destroy resource list and we're going to use element J. We could destroy either one, but we're going to go with this one. Dot game object, since that's what we're actually destroying. We're not going to remove the resource from our resource list yet, because then it would mess up our loop. Instead, we're going to set the flag in the removed resources into red. So element J equals 1. Then we can remove it later. Since we finished looping through and destroying all overlapping resources, we can remove them from our resource list. We'll use a for loop, initialize i to 0, as long as i is less than resource list count, i++. Plus plus. We just need to do a check to see if the flag was set. So if removed resources element i equals equals 1. So it was found to be overlapping and it was destroyed. We can remove it from our list. Resource list dot remove at i. With this code we made sure that there's no overlapping resources anymore. So we can save this script. Minimize mono. Make sure we still have a high number of resources that were spawning. Play it. Zoom out a bit. There we go. No overlapping resources. You can look here. Nope. Not overlapping. Run it again. Again, all good. All the overlapping ones have been deleted. We're going to make one last change for our game. We're going to set this to four minerals and four gas. When we play, we most likely won't see four minerals and four gas, like here, and that's because of our overlap code. But if you walk around, you'll see that it actually works out nicely. Now with each platform creating its own resources, what we'll tackle next is creating multiple platforms.